The godfather of Rarus, Su Guangxian, an invention by a Chinese elder 50 years ago. Can you believe it? In 2025, the rare earth separation plant built by the U.S. for $439 million produces material so impure it can't even be used in Patriot missiles. The purity is two orders of magnitude worse than China's product from 1975. The root of all this traces back to one Chinese elder's invention 50 years ago. Rare earth elements praseodymium, PR, and neodymium, ND, are like identical twins. Back then, Europe and the U.S. used the ion exchange method for separation, akin to using tweezers to sort mixed red and green beans, yielding only a small handful in a week. But the cascade extraction method, invented by Su Guangxian, was like an automatic sorting machine for those beans. Dozens of extraction stages filter the material, achieving 99.99% purity in just a few hours and slashing the production cost to one quarter of the American cost. What's more disruptive is that this wasn't an accidental breakthrough. He mastered the separation formulas for 15 rare earth elements and generously conducted free workshops to teach the technique across all of China. Today, the West spends $5 million annual salaries to poach Chinese experts, Yet their multi-billion dollar plants can't produce a qualified product after five years, because the technology is a complete systemic body. Merely stealing a few formulas is useless. Today, let's explore how this scholar, who went from being a top student at Shanghai Jiao Tong University to the godfather of rare earths, used a single test tube to shatter the Western monopoly, leaving the U.S. with mines but no choice but to beg China for processing. 1. Returning home. The nation's need outweighed a Nobel offer. Aboard the General Gordon in 1951, Su Guangxian held his Columbia University PhD certificate, but rejected a postdoctoral invitation from Nobel laureate Robert Mulliken. At the time, the U.S. offer included unfettered access to laboratories and an annual salary equivalent to decades of income for an average person back home. But upon seeing the U.S. block students from returning, he and his wife, Gao Xiaoxia, immediately packed up. Science has no borders, but scientists have a motherland. Meanwhile, the West was busy monopolizing nuclear technology. When the Soviet Union withdrew its experts in 1957, China's nuclear industry faced a desperate situation. Without hesitation, Su Guangxian switched his focus to nuclear fuel extraction. Relying on thousands of index cards of compiled data, he deduced the necessary rules, helping China develop a new method for plutonium extraction. His strategic choice was decisive. Even in 2025, 83.7% of the U.S.'s rare earth supply still relies on China. Commentary. This was no simple display of patriotism. Su Guangxian's choice was fundamentally about precisely anchoring his personal talent to the historical node where the nation needed it most. Looking back at the 1970s, while the West claimed technology without borders, they practiced technological hegemony, using the Manhattan Project to block nuclear technology and using predatory capital extraction to turn China's rare earth resources into the global supply chains. Primary raw material pool. Su keenly realized that technology sharing was merely a strong man's rhetoric. He abandoned his long cultivated field of quantum chemistry and led a team to start from scratch. His team broke through the cascade extraction theory, boosting rare earth purity from 60% to 99.99%, surpassing the West and completely overturning the dilemma that China has the rare earth, but not the technology. Without this, nation first, strategic choice, China's rare earth industry would have been reduced to a Western resource colony, and the lifelines of today's global electronics, NEVs, and military equipment would be choked by others. It was Su Guangxian's commitment to serving the nation through science that built an unshakable technical great wall for China's rare earth industry. 2. Breaking the monopoly, digging a golden key, from a U.S. failure. In the late autumn of 1972, cold winds carried industrial dust over the furnaces of the Baotou steel plant. Despite possessing the world's largest reserves at the Bayanibo mine, mountains of raw ore were being shipped overseas at dirt cheap prices. 
only to return as refined compounds sold back to China at tenfold the cost. Western chemical giants used the ion exchange method, a precise but inefficient process that required dozens of crystallization cycles just to separate common PR and ND, costing a staggering $50,000 per ton with a monthly output of less than 100 kilograms. Late one night in a Peking University lab, Su Guangxian's lamp cast a glow on yellowed English literature. As he flipped to a report from a U.S. institute labeled, Experiment failed. His bloodshot eyes suddenly lit up. He tapped the data page. They are stuck in a fixed mindset. The chemist's pen flew across the paper. The cascade extraction theory might break the deadlock. Replacing mechanical repetition with continuous separation will increase efficiency by at least a hundredfold. In that instant, Chinese rare earth industry glimpsed dawn. He and his team labored for two years, finally developing this magic process, a 30-plus stage extraction line that precisely controls acidity and flow, compressing weeks of work into mere hours. When the Bauto factory launched in 1974, it immediately achieved 99.99% purity, while the West was struggling to hit 95%. The U.S. spent decades researching it afterward but still hasn't figured out the precise parameters. 3. The China Shock The Man Who Dropped Global Rare Earth Prices by 75% The Rare Earth Separation Technology Workshops Su Guangxian began conducting in 1978 were nothing short of an industrial game-changer. Breaking through academic barriers, the scientist, now hailed as the father of China's rare earths, wrote the core formula and technical specifications of the self-developed cascade extraction theory on the blackboard without reservation. Every crucial detail, from the ratio of extractant to the parameters of the separation process, was meticulously explained, ensuring even factory line workers could master the core technology. This month's long feast of knowledge quickly ignited the development of the rare earth industry nationwide. Within a few years, Chinese smelting and separation plants grew from a handful of state-owned enterprises to dozens of large-scale producers. By the early 1990s, the mass production of high-purity rare earth products, enabled by this advanced technology, flooded the international market. The global rare earth price system collapsed under the China shock. The price of rare earth metals, once comparable to gold, plummeted to one quarter of its original value within a few years catching established Western rare earth companies completely off guard. This technological breakthrough and industrial transformation, spearheaded by a Chinese scientist, not only reshaped the global rare earth supply landscape but became a classic case of Chinese technological power rewriting international market rules. The West was completely panicked. The U.S. Mountain Pass mine, opened in the 1950s, still couldn't build a separation plant. Even in 2025, 80% of its ore must be shipped to China for processing. German automakers like Volkswagen need 1.5 kilograms of neodymium iron boron magnets per electric motor, but 87% of global capacity is in China. A supply cut would halt production. The decisive move, China directly banned the export of rare earth technology in 2023, eliminating the West's last chance to copy the homework. For Western failure, why can't they close the 50-year gap? The West pursued rare earth independence relentlessly. The U.S. poached 47 key rare earth experts from Chinese institutions and companies with high salaries and generous benefits, aiming to master the critical technology. Australia invested billions in a modern separation plant in Western Australia, ambitiously seeking to reshape the global supply chain. However, reality delivered a cold shock. The relaunched separation plant at the once largest U.S. mine, Mountain Pass, has repeatedly stalled. The rare earth oxides it produces achieve only 92% purity, far below the stringent 99.99% plus purity required for military-grade equipment, rendering them useless for high-precision weapons manufacturing. Sweden discovered significant reserves near the Arctic Circle, hoping for a European breakthrough but the project is completely stalled by environmental approval processes. Strict local ecological protection laws require complex ecological restoration systems, with the environmental review alone projected to take 15 years. 
This protracted wait has not only drained project funds but also sent construction costs soaring by 30%, dimming the commercial prospects. Commentary The West is failing to catch up not because of the technology itself, but because they lack the nationally driven dedication plus scientist sacrifice. Ecosystem Su Guangxian's generation pursued research so that the nation would not be bullied, while Western corporations are driven solely by monopoly and profit. This fundamental difference in initial intent created the 50-year technological divide. This should serve as a warning. The essence of technological competition is loyalty. Technology detached from national need, no matter how advanced, cannot sustain an industry. Today's rare earth gain proves that whoever controls the core technology holds the ultimate leverage. Su Guangxian's life teaches us that the power of science is not for creating bottlenecks, but for breaking monopolies and promoting global fairness.